it's, it's my pleasure sir and uh, at this see you after five years uh, you know after having so many classes with you of competitive intelligence and strategy and uh, complimentary course <laughs> Well, I think pleasure is all mine that you are still remembering me. That's that's a great achievement for a teacher. So I think uh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank yeah, Pawan. So, Thank you so, so much. Before we start, I think I want to ask you, how's things going? Things I mean, are going well. Yeah. Yeah, things are pretty good, and uh, with the help of blessings and the efforts we have been putting in collectively over the years, I think it it, it has been rewarding finally. You know. um getting to join it escp and also enjoy my time with family back in my village in vijayawada andhra so and in the couple of weeks i'll be joining escp in september of start so that's, even that's really great that's really great yeah we even started with online classes as escp focuses on first semester being in the first two months july and august being online so that everybody has a collective foundations and then we start the specialized courses in the paris madrid Uh, touring and the uh, London campuses as we are spread across the Europe to have a collective European ecosystem for the alumni and also the employers to have a great set. And yeah, thanks for asking. So, how is it going for you? How is it going for you? Am I audible, sir? Yeah, you you are audible to me, but uh, I think uh, there was a slight lag which happened just just now. But it's okay. I think now it's uh, perfectly okay. I think. So well, thank you, sir. And let me once check with the audience if they can uh, hear us properly. And let me once give it a look on LinkedIn. Yeah, kindly, kindly also check whether this is uh, going live in LinkedIn. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. I, I assume it is going well. Uh, let me give me one moment. Can anybody confirm in the comment section if at all? Do we get to see the comment section from this? Just a second, just a second, just a second. Sure. Hi everyone, let us just wait for a minute for Apple Sir to be back. and uh, we'll be starting in a minute Yeah, yes, I sir. think uh, it's working in LinkedIn. I can see that. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Even I just yeah. search type it out, and yeah, it's working well. Thank you for the good update. Uh, give me one second. So most oh. of your audience is going to give a chat to you in LinkedIn, not here. Just to give, just to give. Uh, yeah. Sure, sir. Think, uh, because here we both will be there only. It will be going live there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. yes, sir. yes. Sir. I completely understand that. Thank you for letting me know. That is my first time doing LinkedIn live, and you yeah. being the expert. Thanks for guiding me. No, 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 no. That's not a point. I'm just giving a point. Yeah, and I'm saying I'm very genuine. Thank you so much. So, sir, I want to know, like, what has inspired you to choose? You know, after your uh, MBA and also your, I think there's a dual voice from your mobile phone, Benny. Uh, just a second. Is it okay now? Yes, now it is better. So now it is fine. Yeah. So, so what I was saying, so you were asking me the question that why, why I choose uh, education industry? That's what yes. the question was. Yes. I mean. Uh, Manu, I think you are also now mature enough that uh, uh, you know most of things we plan, and sometimes things happens. Hmm. Uh, so, 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 so it was both in my case. I mean, in the sense, after my MBA, which I completed, I thought uh, to go into consultancy industry. Uh, so I did some consulting jobs for some, 
but then uh, all of a sudden i, I uh, in ups that that was a dry time that you know they think uh, that i was applying for phd there hmm. for that matter for aviation that's the area because my uh, master's i did from iit delhi and iit delhi said that you know you need to have eight years of experience for a phd there hmm. so i don't have eight years of at that time so i thought uh, to, uh, not to waste time so at that time phd in ups was the only one which was given phd in infrastructure i mean like mm. aviation all those you know the programs how yeah. all ups used to have yeah. but then when i applied there i think we, uh, the the management at that time said that why can't you join us mm. so teach as well and to be very frank baru uh, before that i i never thought that i will be a teacher i mean i mean i mean not because of any reason i was like i i, I mean i never thought that uh, this this is a line which which should be given to me but then uh, banu also i want to tell you that i think uh, uh, banu whether you will agree with me or not but sooner or later you will also realize that you know uh, what is good for you or what is best for you will come for you will come to you no matter what you plan so uh, so 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 if you if you look at my my, my business education experience it was much larger than my corporate experience so in the sense i did my consultancy i teaching Uh, industry collaborations, everything, and I, I think it was a good journey altogether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds good, sir. Even I completely understand how you are actually explaining how the journey has been happening, and the, thanks to the destiny, you are at the right place and been pretty helpful for so many students just like me. And also the kind of growth you had over the years is pretty inspiring. And you know, when you used to teach without using a PPT by drawing on the board, those were really good memories back then because you know you don't waste any time. you come to the class you start the lecture you tell the story and then you ask questions and then you take the feedback and then you take say about the takeaways and then you the way you teach right is very uh, fantastic it's pretty good and uh, thanks, thanks for doing thanks that. So and regarding uh, how should a b school student approach as the agenda of this conversation the agenda of this linkedin live webinar is going to happen so the very first question i'm curious to ask is how should they choose the right course because you know most of the times people choose a course based on their friend or a senior or elder brother has done it or secondly based on just by looking at the title because they don't know what would be the modules what would be the kind of location they would get employed in example if they want to study uh, fashion they have to choose some somewhere in europe or somewhere in mumbai or goa or delhi but doing it in somewhere others would not be equally rewarding so how should a person a student choose the right course and what are the things they have to consider while choosing the right course in terms of specialization even if it's bba or bcom when you say b school education this comprises right so how should they choose the right course and right specialization and in the right campus what are the things they have to think before choosing the right course thanks for knowing this is a very interesting and pressing question as well because that's a question which is there in my time in your time and for the current generation everyone has a same same challenge that you know uh, that you know uh, uh, you know how to choose the right course how to, how to choose the right stream i hope you are able to hear me clearly if yes, i am very, very sure very fantastic i, so I think i think fine. i i think uh, the answer to that question is not short for the pattern mm -hmm. okay so let so let me put it straight if whatever see the b school education has changed in the last 20 years mm -hmm. okay when i was doing mba There was a hardly two or three streams which are important. I am talking about 2014. I mean, it's so long back. It's already 10 years. Yeah. Okay. So, so at that time, you know, it was hardly HR, finance, uh, marketing, and IT, or as well as technology for that matter. Yeah. And within two, three years of time, the startup industry blew uh, boom up automati automatically, and then logistics and supply chain came out, and operations became one of the more important uh, subjects. etc traditional marketing i think became one of the very uh, high uh, high uh, branch at that time yeah so today after covid if you look at it technology has taken us very central stage in terms of even you do bcom or ba bba whatever in the basic education technology has taken a very important central stage but having said that one the core has not changed that you yeah core is that the business is how you are able to sell the product to get a client i mean that's the simple 
logic mm-hmm. behind the business. I mean, I mean, I mean, how much, uh, how to sell a particular product, make sure the product is affordable to the customer, customer mm-hmm. likes it, mm-hmm. and you have a USP that's so that you know customer comes to you, mm-hmm. and and that's that's the logic behind a business. I mean, for kind yeah. of about whatever technology or or branch you take, that's the mm-hmm. basic. So my my view is first of all that let's not take too much pressure in terms of what will happen after two years of my MBA or three years of my BBA. Yeah. Because you 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 cannot predict completely. Okay. So yeah. so let's forget that. Mm. Second thing is the students today has to when you know when you, it's like IIT JE mm. uh, to be very frank. Mm. If you really consider that you should uh, you know evaluate and. Uh, and try to choose a particular branch. Mm. I think the the the, the responsibility of students starts much much before PG and much before BB also. Yeah. In the sense, that when they are in 11 to 12, they have to have certain understanding and exposure to different industry, different um, uh, processes, different business acumen. I'm not saying you learn complete MBA, but at least try to understand what are the industries are. Hmm. Instead of waiting for twelfth result and then you have hardly one month and then you decide that okay let's take three or three catalogs and hmm. out of that menu you choose one, hmm. that's not the way it works. Yeah. So at least for two years try to expose yourself at least theoretically to the industries which are working for, yes. and choose one which looks very exciting for you. Exactly. Okay. It may or may not be your career tomorrow, but at least choose something which excites you. Okay. Yeah. And that's that, that's one important factor. Mm-hmm. Secondly, why I'm saying is because whatever branch you're going to take in, there is no guarantee after 10 years you'll be in the same branch. Yeah. Right. Sorry? So, so mm-hmm. first thing is you, should, you have to make sure that you, you you choose your subjects with slight experience in the next, um, I mean, previous two years, 11th and 12th, or in, in, in terms of PG, in BBA. Mm-hmm. You explore yourself in different, different areas. I mean, Manu, you are the best example. I mean, you read your BBA, mm. okay, and the BBA when you're second year, if I'm not wrong, yeah. you're always constantly trying to explore different areas. What will happen after two years? What is the thing which I have to do? I'm saying minus the tension part, at least try to explore all those areas so that your decision become making becomes much more easy. Yeah, that's one thing. Second thing which I want to really really concentrate on. Whatever stream you're taking, today NEP has come in India, National Education Policy. Mm. So yeah. if your person is doing BBA, let's say major in digital marketing, they can do a minor in finance mm. or minor in computer science, minor in corporate law, depends mm. on the different catalogs. Yeah. Your your degree should be a mix of two or three things. I mean, mm. try yourself to be exposing in different, different areas. Mm. I mean, that is how it, it really works. Yeah, that is how it really works. Yeah. So, I mean, just a second, just a second. Yeah, sure, take your time. Manu? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can see. Yeah. So, so, so I think we, uh, sorry, but I think we have to close it at five, ten minutes because my child is not well. Okay, so, sir. Yeah. Okay, okay. As of now, so, you can quickly, uh, quickly ask the questions. I think you can close it yeah, up. Sure. Yeah, we can finish it in ten minutes. So, and uh, thanks for letting me know. So, yeah, uh, here we have fifteen audience joined from the LinkedIn. As I can just saw the number of attendees, and thanks everyone for joining this call. And to be more concise and precise as considering the time constraints. So the second question, the third question I want to ask is how important is the extracurricular involvement and also the networking and relationship building there too? Because you know most of them the faculty helps at times with the careers or the guidance or the connecting with an alumni is already working in that. And also how do they justify this time of networking and relationship building? And also their time in extracurriculars and how would they be rewarding on the longer run for a B school school? So for a BSU school student, I think extracurricular activity is the most important thing. Because the reason is I tell you why. Because whatever specialization you're taking, in, that's the theoretical part of it. Mm-hmm. Most important is how much you're interacting with the students, how much you can take lead, 
how much you are not shy, how much you can convince, communicate well with the with the students. I mean, all those practices can only be learned when you are in a club activity, you are you are in a gathering, you are you are leading an event. I mean, those are the very important initiatives which which makes a person different from others. I mean, I mean to be very frank to you, your specialization may have a very minor part to play. Yeah. It is always that how much you interact with the students, how much you can uh, and and gel with the student. For example, I mean, I mean, in the sense, okay, to be very frank, Manu. The, uh, I always say to students that you know the, the, the skill mm. of us of, of a leader is to make sure that he convinces people to do those things mm. which they generally don't want to do. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, convincing people to do a certain thing which they are not passionate about is a, is a very difficult thing. Yeah. Very difficult thing. Absolutely. But then convincing them, motivating them, and make sure that you you make them do those, those tasks is a clear skill you can learn learn in a lot of activities you do in the B school. I mean that is how the whole thing works. So I always say that ki, uh, ma, ma B school the club activities really play a lot. Networking, I mean, Banu is not only for important of B school. I would say for everybody, including me, I would say anybody in his career, the networking is what makes. See, uh, your career has a lot of factors. For so one of the factor is how many people know you, mm-hmm. and the people who know you where they are. Yeah. I mean, it's very, very crucial. I mean, I mean, I mean, very frankly, I mean, I'm saying yeah, your skills, yeah. IQ, make you top 10% of the of the world. It's fine. I mean, I mean, I mean, there, there, there will be many, many with that. Mm-hmm. But where you reach also depends on how many people you know and where they are. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. So but because what the top B school offers, uh, yeah. you know, because even if you go, are in Mumbai, there would be friends and employers of banks in Delhi. It is consulting company. In Dublin, it is technology company. So where we are, who our friends are, as you mentioned, plays a great role. Absolutely. So, as you mentioned, sir, one thing really struck me, uh, which is you said the importance of uh, extracurriculars. You know, many people think that it's only for the certificate of achievement or internship. It's for the fifteen thousand rupees stipend. But the people they meet in that process play a significant role on their next steps and the journey. So that's something I found very fascinating on what you just mentioned. Yeah, yeah, then it's it's important. It's important. I think what's the next question, Manu? So the next question? How do is how does a B school student, example, most of the people are actually doing part time freelancing or work from home kind of initiatives on parallel with the academic uh, responsibilities they have. Most MBA students in India are abroad. So how do they balance this? How do they plan out their schedule in such a way they have their enough time for personal commitments and also for the academic pursuits to go in balance? Manu, I think uh, Manu, Manu, I think we uh, yeah. close it, sir. We'll wrap it up, sir. We'll wrap it up. Thank you, audience, for joining. So we'll again do something next month, hopefully. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I think, but I can we. What we can do is we can extend this. Uh, uh, don't stop it. I can. You can. You can extend the time window so that you cannot cancel the event. Maybe in afternoon, evening. If I after the if I, after I uh, come from the call. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Hospital, I think we can uh, we can do it again. Yes, sir. We can take we can think about it later sure, on. Sure, Thanks sure, very much. Sure. Please carry on, sir. Sure, sure. And Thanks, com- complete, Thanks, we sir. all understand it. So no, not a problem, sir. Not a problem. Sure, sure, sure. Take care of sorry, sorry for our trouble. Sure, sure. Thank no, you. Not at all, not at all, Thanks. sir. It's all everyone can understand it. Thanks. Thanks. Sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. So guys, and uh, and one more thing I want to touch base on a personal level is the importance of a study abroad semester because you know. Let me once uh, join this panel. So we have a question from Manojana Nirmolu on how to easily change. Hi Manojana, thank you for asking this question. So the answer would be how to change to analyst from IT sales. So the first thing is how do you impress the employer? Example, you have an employer, your reporting manager. Example, you're working in a company called as, let me say, you're working in a specific company and you want to change. Am I audible, Manojana? Can you please give a thumbs up if I'm audible to you? So first example, you're working in the sales team and you can see the people in the IT analyst team or the reporting manager, the director of analyst of business analytics in the very same company. And you can ask them if you can do a project with them in collaboration and how do you test that? And you know, it's just like a freelancing project. You can ask them just by saying you're a genuine interest. It's just like in a movie, 
uh, side character wants to become a main protagonist and how do they approach it just by asking or in a bank how can an accountant become a bank manager just by asking and uh, understanding the business requirements on a longer run and how do they do that that's exactly what's going to play a pivotal role in ensuring we get the right people at the right time who would want to take part in it and that's exactly what we have to ensure while we do it and secondly uh, it's about uh, learning skills like tableau python power bi ms excel because you're currently in it sales where your uh, technical expertise or exposure would be more onto tools like salesforce or hubspot or email using a software like fresh caller or exotic where you call or you tell and you pitch your ideas where now you have to see from an analyst perspective on uh, how is the reports and charts and dashboards so now you would use the salesforce again the same tool but you're not going to use the calling software of it you would be using the reports and dashboards and the charts to analyze the business outcomes and its uh, long range planning and stuff so that's where uh, you can actually ask your current employer to uh, ask for a project or an internship or just a uh, coffee chat and explain your ideas with them and next question we have is uh, as sir is not available considering his uh, child is not feeling well so let me wrap up for the time being so we can again do this call some other time and regarding my opinion on how important are the soft skills as compared to the technical skills so the very first aspect we have to understand is that technical skills are coachable you join deloitte accenture mckinsey or bcg or google microsoft any company the very first thing is that as a fresher when you seeing from a b school fresher perspective like an mba guy 24 years age or a bbf graduate 21 years of age and what do they expect from you they wouldn't expect you to know the rocket science or how to run a campaign they would run expert basic things do you can you speak can you present can you write and can you talk to people so that they understand what you're trying to explain what you're trying to convey is the communication going to a way that is the first thing many people try to understand so considering that very important aspect you have to ensure that technical skills are foundationally good not like you're completely rookie in it is to ensure you're at least good in it so that later on you can uh, leverage and build more on your core competencies which will be trained on office there is onboarding program there is training program so that to become an analyst or to become a support to be into product management or engineering or anything like you know for business school student even if they have done btech before and they want to then an mba they can again become a, a manager engineering or you know engineering manager or a product manager a uh, technical uh, partnership manager kind of roles wherein they can also use the technical acumen and if you observe this they can be trained they can be taught in these very aspects but considering that the soft skills cannot be trained after you uh, attain a certain age limit even if dale carnegie has mentioned that you know soft skills has to be nurtured the sooner the better you know after 70 years of age or 40 years of age it's very hard for a person to change the way they interact with people so how likable they can be in an office environment these things would be different so feel free to text guys if you have any questions so uh, i can uh, share my thoughts on the very same just like manojana i just asked a question so we can have other questions uh, what future trends do we see in ai you know what future trends do we see in business school education with the involvement of ai and metaverse so the first thing is that faculty will be able to talk to you no matter where you are considering metaverse and you will have a classroom kind of environment with a vr headset and stuff and secondly regarding chat gpt and other generative ai programs after you study and while you study you know grammarly 10 years ago was questioned on how does this and show the content is genuine but now everybody is using grammarly 20 years ago during the keypad touchpad times people asked how can a uh, keypad or a keyboard change a type typewriter and now it's so normalized in the same way ai will be very normalized it's the future is going to be for a b school student how do they talk to ai how do they give the right prompts 
and how can the example a content writer roles will reduce a lot because chat gpt can write uh, good enough content and this is the very first version we are seeing for the last two years and as it evolves chat gpt 4 chat gpt 5 it will be able to do a lot more things right better content than what many other literary students and many other bba marketing mba marketing guys will be able to do and how do they use it as an assistant and not as uh, almighty because ai if you start seeing it as an almighty it will use us we have to use ai to get our results and that is what a b school student should be pretty particular and pretty clear about it's about you should ask it how to write a proper content give it the right prompt write me an essay write me a blog post about personalization trends which for 2024 would also be applicable for 2025 and write the blog in such a way it is increased readability uh, using rich vocabulary and the target audience or marketing managers so it you're giving it enough inputs to personalize that blog as uh, deep as possible as relevant as possible for the target audience so that is one thing you have to understand and consider while approaching your you know while understanding and dealing with ai as a b school student and also as a graduate working later on in the run and the last question i'm going to talk about is how important is the global exposure in study abroad uh, programs example you'd be having a two-year mba or a three-year bba and one semester would be you'd be going for a study exchange semester and in this study exchange semester how do you And in this kind of a study abroad uh, semester or kind of a thing, how do you approach your uh, peers, network, and colleagues? Because you're not going for that one semester to get a job in that new country. It's very hard. So people who are already being in that country for three, four years, have a study work permit uh, after they graduate, it's impossible to get a job. So what instead you can do is focus more on the network. Focus more, example, five years down the line after you graduate, you might become a senior manager of sales or marketing or global expansion of international business markets in a, a complementary or relevant function. And how would you approach it in such a way that your friends in different countries you're going for study abroad to Sydney, California, London or Japan, Tokyo, wherever, or Paris or Madrid, how do you leverage this network? How do you ensure the people whom you studied in the classroom, they also are a senior manager roles five years down the line? So how would they benefit you to launch a new product or a new feature, new app, a new merchandise in their location? How do they help you um, do this geographic transition? How do they help you expand and diversify your product line? How do they give you survey and feedback and insights on the how the land and law would be speaking of that specific uh, new geography? So this is where you can network and socialize with them, understand the nitty gritties of how the new markets would behave to a new culture the way norway would take a new product would not be the same way the way japan or dubai would be taking it so you have to understand how the markets would behave while you go for a study abroad semester and one advice and and, and as a closing note as uh, we'll again do it with atil sir uh, next week or sooner today uh, once he is uh, available as considering uh, his child is not feeling well, he had to drop off from the call. And uh, I'll be touch basing on this one last question we'll be talking as part of the agenda, which is uh, advice for prospective students. See, regarding the jobs, don't always expect the placement team will get you the jobs. They can only take you till the pond, just like uh, a farmer would take a horse to a pond and the horse has to drink it or not, the water that is available. In the same way, how well you leverage your resources and capabilities and people and facilities and opportunities available at your B.S. completely depends on your merit and competencies. So considering that very point, uh, it's about our own network, our own learnings, our own skills. And, you know, more than the skills, it's about our soft skills. And, you know, as a fresher, they're not expecting you technical expertise. If it has it been for an executive MBA, they would be expecting your network and technical and leadership skills. But as a fresher, uh, they would expect most of the soft skills on how coachable you are how easy are they are you to mold and coach a new topic a new skill because coaching happens a youtube video can also teach you 
so you are not a replacement there you are a replacement of how likable can you be in a board meeting how convincing can you be in a group discussion so these things matter uh, so that is what they would be looking forward and regarding chat gpt they can write your as a hr it can do your work it can uh, ai bots can call new candidates and they can close candidates according to job description using chat gpt or bard ai gemini can actually uh, write new content and do the role of a marketers and uh, every almost every ai in our days can do the balance sheets ledgers and stuff that a finance manager can do and regarding management consultant that is something uh, people are now able to get consultant in house instead of actually making them fly so the business education is going to change on a very significant level so that you will be understanding it on a very longer run and wishing you all good luck and great uh, progress as you pursue or venture out into the into your new business education so wishing you all great luck guys see you all thank you all for joining and please stay in touch